All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about this little camera, which is the Insta360 GO 3. Some of you may remember last year when I did a review of the Insta360 GO 2. A few weeks ago, Insta360 reached out to me and said, we've got the GO 3, and we wanna do a sponsored video. Are you into it? I said, absolutely, because I loved the GO 2. Now, the GO 2 had this same pill-shaped form factor, which is very cool. It's magnetic on the back. What I like about it, between the size and the, the magnetic connection with it, is you can mount this to just about anything, and you can take it and put it just about about anywhere. Start recording. All right, so let's talk about how you would use the Go 3. There's a couple different modes you can use this in. The first one I wanna talk about is just standalone mode. So with the camera itself, you've got a magnet on the back, and this is how you're gonna mount it to things. On the front of the camera, we've got the lens, and you can remove the protective lens filter. If you wanna use neutral density filters or creative filters, something like that, you can just screw them in. And opposite the lens, you actually have a button on the front of the camera. By default, you can single press this button to engage regular video recording, or you can double press this button to engage free frame video. Video. Of course, both these functions are customizable, which brings us to a new addition to the Go 3 setup. This is the Action Pod. Now, the Action Pod does a couple different things. So, first of all, we just insert the Go 3 and it attaches magnetically. The Action Pod gives us a monitor and touch screen, which is flippable if you want to use this for vlogging applications. And what's really cool is the Action Pod actually has its own dedicated battery and acts as a power reserve. So, when you're using standalone mode, when you put it back in the Action Pod, it's going to start charging the Go 3. So that is really cool. And that's a big improvement that we had over the Go 2 is, first of all, we had heat issues. So we had limits on the recording length. We no longer have limits on the recording length. It just is how much space you have in the actual camera itself. And then the other cool thing is that you can record up to 170 minutes. So just a little south of three hours with the Go 3. A little test here so you guys can hear the audio. It's actually pretty good. I'm impressed. And I mentioned this is a touchscreen interface, so I can go in here into my settings and I can actually customize a lot of things, including the single and double press functions on the camera. Now, there's actually, this would be the second mode you could use this in is with the Action Pod. There is a third mode you can use it in because I can actually take this out of the Action Pod and you can use them as long as the Bluetooth connection is stable. You have a monitor that is wireless from the actual camera. That is very cool. Obviously, the Action Pod is going to turn this into a more conventional action camera that's a little bit bigger. And so let's talk about some of the interface on here. So on one side of the camera, we've got the USB port, and this is how you're gonna charge everything. We also have the release button, and this is actually what you need to press to release the camera from the Action Pod. On the other side, we have our power up button. We have our quick function button. On the top, you've got a record button. And on the bottom of the camera, on the right and left side, you can see where the quick release plate is going to go. It's really cool because you can attach it to both standalone mode or to the action pod. So if you're running low on battery, it will work either way. Which brings me to some of the included accessories when you buy the Go 3 that we've got here. So the first one I wanna talk about, we have the quick release plate. Everything is magnetic on here, which I love because everything feels very firm and snug and it's not like you're gonna mount your camera to something that's gonna fall. So the quick release plate just goes on the bottom like that and it has a quarter inch thread tripod socket in it. So you could put it on a standard tripod or you could use the included Insta360 stick pad. So let's show you how this works. So we've got tripod threading on here, tripod threading on here. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in. And we have a protective cover here, which you can unscrew, which has a sticky surface material. So literally you can stick this anywhere and then you just move this around as needed to frame up your composition and you're ready to go. There are two other accessories that are included with the camera for using in standalone modes. So the first one is a little clip that you can put this in. There's the clip, so you could put this on your shirt or you could hang it on something, whatever you want to do. Designed to be mounted on a hat, but you can use it however you like. And since the back is actually magnetic, we have a little pad that you can actually just stick this on. So different applications that you could have here, you put this on one side of your shirt. On the inside, it actually comes with a neck strap that comes out. Put this in your shirt. Stick it on. And you've got an instant body cam here for first person view shooting. Magnetic seal is pretty tight on this, so you can put it under a jacket, a hat. If you're an athlete and you do first person view shooting or maybe you're skiing, this is an 
excellent option for just being able to capture footage. And speaking of action, the Insta360 supports three stages of flow state stabilization. Flow state is image stabilization that's going to get out all the bumps and jitters in your video, and it looks awesome. And we also have 360 horizon lock, which will keep the horizon actually straight. So if your camera actually starts to move, it will correct for that. And as I mentioned, we've got a touchscreen interface. I'll give you a quick tour of that so you can see how you get to stuff. So on the back of the camera, if you just swipe down from the top, you're going to get your little icons for various settings that you might want to change on here. There's two pages, so if you swipe to the left, you're going to see some additional. And if you go into the settings here, this is where you're actually going to be able to set up. If you scroll down to go three button settings, this is where you can actually customize what the single and double taps on the front of the camera will do. Swiping from the right side is going to give you access to all of your exposure settings for both auto and manual. Swiping up from the bottom is going to give you access to your aspect ratio, resolution, and frame rate settings. And of course, sliding from the left is going to give you access to all of the video and photo files that you may have captured. And we have three different lens settings. If you hit the little icon on the bottom right of the screen, we've got an ultra wide view, which is really good for getting everything into the scene. There's what we call action view, which is just a little bit tighter. And of course, if you're doing a vlog or you're filming somebody talking, a lot of times if you're using an ultra wide, it can kind of start distorting things. And so it'll actually do a lot of the straightening out of the lines in the image. So that's gonna give you some versatility there. And I should also mention that we've got a couple new video modes in here as well. So we have the standard video mode that everybody's pretty familiar with. It gives you a 16 by 9 crop, either vertical or horizontal. We also have what we call free frame video. The difference is, is that free frame video is going to use the entire sensor, and you get a little bit different aspect ratio when you do that, but it allows you to do some moving around and cropping in post. This is really good for action and sports stuff. You still have access to flow state stabilization as well as the 360 horizon lock. You're going to do those in post-production with the app, but it still looks great. There are also three other modes for video recording that are new. We have pre-recording, which allows you to capture before you actually start recording. It gives you a little bit of a buffer so you don't actually miss something. There's loop recording, which allows you to do multiple takes. And we also have timed capture, which allows you to actually set when the camera needs to turn itself on and start doing things. So this is really great. Let's say you want to get an awesome time lapse of a sunrise. You don't really want to get up at the crack of dawn. We well, could set the camera up the night before, all ready to go, and tell it to turn on at a certain time, and it will do it for you. And another thing that Insta360 have gotten really good at is the way that their app works. This app has really matured over the years, and there's a whole bunch of auto AI editing modes in here, and one of the easiest ones on here is just go into the app. You're going to go into edit. You're going to click stories. You choose a template. You give it some clips, and then you sit back and let it edit together some content. It's going to put music on it. It's going to time everything, and it's going to give you some professional results really easily that are easy to share on social media. Great ways to, like, you know, take your vacation footage and just kind of do some memory types of stuff. It's very cool. And, of course, this wouldn't be Insta360 without some new additions accessories. So these actually don't come with the kit, but there's some really cool stuff that they give you. So the first one is a quick release plate. This is really cool because it's got the quick release for the camera, but it also has tripod threading on the bottom as well as these two things that come down and you have GoPro threading. Both will work on this accessory, which has both tripod threading as well as the standard GoPro mount. Also has a quick lock that goes into place and you can use this as either a little tripod in a pinch or you can use it just as a selfie stick if you're vlogging. And we also have this, which is what we call the monkey tail mount, which has tripod threading, so it can act as an extension to a tripod, and it also will bend and curve into whatever position you want, so you can attach this to all kinds of crazy things that you couldn't before. And there is one more that Insta360 didn't actually send me, but if you have a dog and you like to swim, and by the way, this is waterproof up to 16 feet, but there's an attachment that's made out of rubber that's kind of a fetch stick, which could be fun if you want to get your dog in on the action shooting some footage. So a couple observations and thoughts on my time with the Insta360 GO 3. I really do love this camera. I think the image and audio quality improvements alone are worth the upgrade from the Go 2. It really does have a great picture. It has great sound to it. This is really awesome if you need a device where you just want to capture content on the fly. Something where you don't necessarily need a proper camera, but you want to film the kids doing something or you want to do something on vacation. Maybe you're vlogging. You don't have a lot of room, and this is the whole footprint right here. It's pretty awesome. There's a ton of accessories. One of the things that I love about this is everything is so dead simple to use. And we've talked about the idea of this just being magnetic and everything just kind of fits together. It works together. You don't have to think about it. Another one of my favorite features on here is the voice activation. So you can say things like start recording, stop recording, shut down the camera, 
The simplicity of use is really the highlight for me on this. And the reason that that's important is that when you consider who this camera's for, what the use case is for it, you want something that you can just capture life with, you can do some vlogging with, you can go on vacation with and just capture stuff with the kids or the dogs or whatever that is. You want that to be easy. You don't want to get caught up in technical details. You don't want this thing to take up a bunch of space in your bag. And it does all that so successfully. And it's really been interesting to see these products mature over the years because I think Insta360 has something really strong going for it with the Go 3. There are different variations you can get with this and they basically all come down to the size of the memory that's in the actual camera camera. And so there is no SD card that you remove. And I kind of like that for the case of simplicity too. And when you're moving images and video to your phone, they've gotten that to where it's actually very fast. It's very simple, very easy to use, and you don't have to think about any of these things. And I think that's what I like about this camera the most. It just works. And if you want to get your own Insta360, I've got a link in the description below this video. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.